I mean this with no disrespect. No, I know. When's the last time you went on a climate change protest? God, years ago. <laughs> climate change. You know who cares about it? Nobody. Despite pinky swearing, zero countries are on track to meet their Paris Accord targets. Even in New Zealand, our efforts have been labelled highly insufficient. And that was before our kindness-obsessed Labour-led government was bumped for a right-wing coalition of chaos. With all evidence suggesting we're heading for the worst-case scenario, I've made the bravest decision of all. To give up on humanity and prepare for the lawless, post-apocalyptic hellscape that awaits us. Anyone else keen? So basically all of the information that I'm getting so far is that the world's ending. I'm not sure if it's reached it out here. But <laughs> so um, like forest fires, floods, landslides, and then we'll start fighting each other. No, that doesn't make sense to you. Energy, we're going to be fighting over energy, right? We're going to be fighting over land that we can live on, all of these things. What they're saying is that climate change is coming. It's real. We're going to kill each other trying to survive. You feel entirely unmoved by that. Um. If tomorrow there was an apocalypse, would you feel quite comfortable in that sort of arena? Yeah. Better than how, most. how long do you reckon I would last? Just as your basic assessment of me as a person right now, we've met, we've met each other for about five to ten minutes. Right. So one thing, survival. Yeah. Pe people bring different skill sets. Uh -huh. And what you bring is morale. When we're, when we're walking through here, Lane, yeah. like, what do you think you might need? Like Wood. Okay, so wood? Yeah, wood for a shelter, um, wood for burning, um, and a durable leaf for ablutions. So tall, it's high on your priority list at the moment. It's, I, honestly, when I think about survival, it's the number one thing that worries me. Okay. Because I like to be clean in that area. Yep. And, I, and I'm not even saying that to be funny, but like even in modern worlds, they use baby wipes. So right, yeah. Is that good for the environment? No, it's bad. But here's the problem, you know. Um, mm. One of them is that world governments are transfixed by the economy, mm -hmm. and of course, climate action to reduce emissions uh, means that the economy's got to change. Mm -hmm. You know, we come from a colonial extractive industry uh, culture. Started with the whales and the seals, they murdered them off. Mm. Then it went to the forest, they bowled all of that, that over. Mm. Then it started looking to see what was underground and we started mining mm. and extracting and it's gone to water. And all of that's about amassing as much of the world's wealth or our country's wealth into the hands of a relatively small group of people. And the end game of all of that mm. is climate change. Yeah. And the way that you get there is by not giving a shit about the end game. I mean, that's the whole thing with the climate crisis is that, you know, it's the saddest, like, physical manifestation of rampant capitalism. Jeez, man, you are taking it quite tough, eh? Hey? Well, you should be as well. <laughs> what the hell? Look, um, climate change was not in the top three of people's concerns at this election. And I think if it had been, then, you know, you might have seen a bit of a different result. Is it mad that the world burning is not in our, like, top three concerns? I think so. Yeah, I mean, what? Are, how is that possible? I think, so human beings are really well designed in an evolutionary sense to deal with a very clear and present danger, right? So if yeah. you think about back when we were in the savannah and we were yeah. having to keep an eye out for local lions and stuff like mm -hmm. that, we kind of built to go, there it is, there's the risk, take evasive action or whatever. We're really bad at dealing with slow-moving, invisible yes. threats, right? That's, yeah, the, that's yeah. the problem with climate change, is that by the time it becomes something that we can see and touch and feel, mm. oh, look, there's a cyclone and my house is under two metres of silt, that's the clear and present danger, but that's yeah. too late. What are the biggest animal threats out here? There's no threats. Oh, really? No, not out here. It yeah. might be a spider. <laughs> yeah, I would hate that, actually. Yeah. How many spiders are out here? Thousands. That's horrific. Yeah. Yeah. So, as I understand it, the Paris Accord was we're going to reduce temperature yeah. by two degrees, right? Uh, we're going to stay under two degrees. We're going to stay under two degrees to... increase. Yeah, that's right. And we're not going to stay under 1.5 degree increase at this stage. We would need to cut 
global emissions of carbon dioxide yeah. at about 9% per annum. COVID took 6% of yeah. global emissions in one year yeah. and it's since bounced back. And so we would need COVID and a half emissions compounding every year for about 25 years. Oh, so we aren't fuck. gonna stay under one and a half. Okay. But a survey of climate scientists a couple of years ago in Nature yeah. uh, was about three degrees. They thought okay. we'd end up with three degrees. I was actually two and a half. I was oh, under two right. and a half. Okay. But so I'm, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What's the consequences of a three degree rise in temperature? Um, a lot of damage from extreme events. Yeah. It would also, I think, lead to permanent changes in growing conditions for a lot of um, the world. So right. uh, horticulture would probably be stressed in many parts of the world. Water availability is a really yeah. serious issue. Yeah, yeah. and probably uh, violence along the way as well. That, um, the evidence is that climate change doesn't cause wars, but it's a stressor that contributes to war being fought. Yeah, so we want to ideally have sort of five to six different grades of material. Right, okay. So we don't want to go from small, medium, then large, because yeah. the gap in between each size is too great, particularly yeah. when it's wet. So then what are the grades of stuff? So we got tinder? Think of your t-shirt sizes. Okay. Extra small, yeah. small, medium, large, uh -huh. extra large, so forth. Okay. All right. Once you've done this, uh, we'll see if you can get um, a spark gun on the mm -hmm. ferro rod to light some gum. Yeah. And then you're going to start loading this wood onto that little flame. When the flames come through this I'm material, I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I was concentrating on something entirely different. Can you? I was thinking a joke about AS colour and glasses. <laughs> you finished that? I was distracted by the t-shirt size. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, maybe I need to change that analogy. Fuck, I'm then. so sorry. Don't change it. I was like, a glassons or an AS colour small? So <laughs> stupid. Anyway, so tell me again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I'm so sorry. I genuinely want to learn. I genuinely want to learn. Okay, so if I wanted to communicate with the New Zealand public at large, to me, I go, okay, I have to tell them the scariest thing to motivate them to do something. What is the scariest thing I could say to them? Well, I, I'm not sure that, you, that we should start with the scariest thing, actually, because I, I think... But I'm desperate to. Yeah. <laughs> if the worst comes to pass, society is going to break down. And having your house in a suburb with a backyard is not going to help. <laughs> so... When the snow stops falling on the Southern Alps, Mm. and the water stops running down and driving the turbines, mm. and the electricity's not flowing up. Yeah, yeah. Well, then the lights go out in Auckland, and that's going to be chaos. <laughs> That's, that's going to be chaos. But here's when the, are the lights going out? <laughs> if we really thought the world was going to get a lot worse mm. in the next 50 years, the rational thing for each country to do is to stock up on military hardware and secure a food supply. Oh my God. Well, isn't it? I mean, if you think the world is really going to become a mega violent place, isn't that the rational response? I think very soon we are going to see insurance retreat. We are going to see climate change really having a big impact on the values of properties and ability to insure. Mm. There'll be suburbs that will no longer be I mean, be they insurable. won't insure people. Absolutely. I know either the cost will go up so much that it becomes Finally, I'm emotionally hit. <laughs> You know, quite often the reason why, as economists, we talk about pricing so much, yeah. why it's important to have pricing on things, is because if your insurance premiums went up for two thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars, bloody hell, you would act. Yeah, I would. Because it hurts you in the back pocket. It's crazy how quickly I would act. But also, I think you know, I have some real fears in terms of the, what consequences it will have. There'll be parts of New Zealand where it'll be uninsurable, property prices will fall, and we're going to park our poor people there. They'll become ghettos unless we do something about it now. Climate change is an economic problem, mm. right? It's not an environmental problem. It has environmental consequences. But it's consequences. an economic problem until it's an environmental problem, yeah, yeah. right? It's, well, it's the, it's like, the consequences When the of, floods come, yeah. when the, the fatalities start stacking up as a result, which yeah. I presume will happen, perhaps not in our lifetime, but in the ones no, after it already ours. has. It already, well, it already has. has, yeah. You, but mean, I, you remember those, those floods and storms that we had last year? Yeah. The Auckland anniversary day floods up there. Yeah. People died in those floods, yeah. right? People died in Cyclone Gabriel two weeks later as well. So we had we had climate change fatalities in this country. 
and we don't acknowledge that very much. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not that you want to promote that, but are we making that connection? Are we making the connection between that fatality and climate change? Well, I'm, I try to when I talk about it. You know, so for most of the year after that, you yeah. know, a lot of the speeches that I would start would be, would, would, I would start with an acknowledgement of the people who died yeah. and the thousands of people who were displaced from their homes because yeah. they were wrecked and flooded. <sighs> okay, so... And do you feel happy? Personally? Yeah. Um, yeah, really happy. <laughs> really good, really good spot of my life and... Um, <laughs> Well, I just don't, I don't know. I think there is, what, what's there to be happy about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? What? Well, put some, put some wood on it. Put some wood on it. Put some wood on it. <laughs> don't panic, put some wood on it. I got some wood, I got some wood. Okay, feed your fire from the sides, not from the top. Yeah, load it up. Good job. What do you mean load it up? More wood. Oh, well, You keep taking it out. off the fire. No, it won't. Go, go again. More shit. Yeah, where's the wind coming? It's coming this way, so make sure you're down this side here. So okay? I'm, holy f Yep, you're all right. And try and get the bigger stuff on now. What, this stuff? No, try a bit oh. of this. Oh, yeah. Shit, that feels good. Do we get that on camera? Yeah. Honestly, that was a great job. <laughs> yeah, really? It was, yeah, yeah. Especially, you still had it in the dirt, you know, you yeah. should have put it on a platform. Yeah, I wasn't listening. No, well, is there a world in which I could say, okay, my point of view is I only care about people and I'm happy for the environment or the ecology to burn. Is there an adaptation plan that works for that? There is no future scenario where climate change continues unabated and the fate of humanity is not miserable. Right, with the rising temperatures. Not even with a high house on stilts and... Temperatures, humidity, th there will be large parts of the planet that will simply become uninhabitable. I'm imagining like a dome-like structure. <laughs> Say best case scenario, New Zealand became the greenest country on Earth, right? And our emissions plummet. Mm -hmm. On a global scale, is that going to, and I'm talking purely in an emissions basis here, mm. have an impact? No. Okay, it won't. No. Okay. Because no. our, our emissions... Well, that doesn't make me very motivated. Well, no, well, that's right, and it's one of the arguments I have to deal with all the time. Yeah. But New Zealand is a tiny emitter yeah. on the global stage. We emit less than 1% of the total. Yeah. But here's the thing. If you add up all of the countries, and there are about 90 countries mm. that emit less than 1%, together, collectively, we add up to 30%. Yeah, right. Right? And 30% is a larger number than the US, or the EU, or China, or India, or Russia, or yeah. Brazil. So if we say, well, we're too small to make a difference, actually mm. so is China. Because yeah. China by itself is too small to make a difference. So we actually all have to, all sure. of us, right? I've never thought about it like that. Whoa! Oh! So where should it be? Like, should it be, like, am I looking at it um, through there? Or am you, I looking at it through you there? You see the target, see the target in here. Yeah, but I saw it in there before. And okay, come a little bit lower then. Say so, same again. Too high, eh? So I'm looking at here, when I look yep. at it, it's right in the middle of those. But how do you know? You can't. Hold it, hold it. Yeah, so. <laughs> Fuck you. Sorry. You're a very nice man. <laughs> Here we go. This is it. I can feel it. Yeah! <laughs> told ya! <laughs> well done, Mira. Would you be teaching your children how to fight? <laughs> how to, like, protect yeah. resources? It's sad. They're both really keen cricketers. Yeah. And I sometimes wonder if I, you know, should have taught them more about defence rather than cricket. And that's a really sad way to feel. Yeah. I, they get dragged around to climate events. And yeah. when somebody tells them that, that there'll be no, nowhere to live in 50 years and human civilization will collapse, and I've got, you know, and I remember Charlotte when she was eight hearing yeah. this, and she looked at me, you know, really shocked. Yeah. And I shook my head because I absolutely don't believe that that's true. 
And I think it's a terrible thing to tell an eight-year-old. New Zealanders say that we care about climate change. Mm. We say that we want to make improvement, but when push comes to shove, we choose not to act. Mm. So if you look at the rainfalls that we're getting, the storms, the fires, these are already much more intense, much more frequent mm. than, than the models had predicted. So those realities, I think, are going to force quite a lot of change. We are essentially giving up agency. Mm. Rather than taking control of it and say, we are going to have a way that we're going to work on this together, I think what we're instead going to see is things will get done to us. Things will get done to us, right? Like, your manner is so friendly and, like, honestly quite soothing. But then, like, if I was to read what you were saying on paper, I would kind of read that and go, there is no hope. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so with, with climate change coming, you know, I kind of have this overwhelming sense, a little bit like I'm on my own. So what are some things you think I can do practically to prepare myself for individual survival? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's going to be extremely difficult by yourself. Yeah. Because um, something did go wrong. There's no one there yeah. to, to help, to support you through those highs and lows as well. Like, if we're genuinely talking about survival, is a person alone more or less likely to survive than a person with somebody else? Or a person the in individual the is more vulnerable. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's the thing is that I had been kind of preparing for how to do it individually and now I come to you to learn how to do it individually and you're telling me the best thing I can do is do it in a group. Yeah, yeah. A compatible group. Unless it turns into kind of a Lord of the Flies yeah, situation and I'm Peggy yeah. and then, yeah. Then we've got issues. Yeah. I just know I'd be Peggy as well. Um, yeah. It feels overwhelming in terms of going like, okay, so this is a problem that I can solve or that we can solve or that literally anyone can solve. Well, we can. Oh, okay, that's good news because I have not felt that yeah, <laughs> so no, 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 far. No, no, we can. So what we've got to do is we've just got to mobilise public consciousness mm. to, to send the message, two messages, one to the big companies, we aren't going to put up with this. Yeah. You know, we'll be marching with our pitchforks at you eventually, and that's not going to, it's going to be pretty rough. Yeah, and you don't mean that metaphorically. No, no, I don't. No, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. and, and the other thing is, the message to the politicians is, don't be afraid of the solutions. Mm. Politicians will be measured in the future by how much they're, they're doing about yeah. fixing it, as opposed to how far down the road they're kicking it. But look, here's the thing. I can okay. see the anxiety <laughs> starting to emit from you. <laughs> don't don't be anxious. We can do it. Like, we stopped deep sea oil drilling. Yeah, but now they're going to start it again. Yeah, but we're going to stop it again. We've done it before. <laughs> but who's got the energy? I do. <laughs> I have a feeling like we've been saying we're running out of time for about 20 years. Yeah. Like, when will we actually run out of time? time. I mean, in one sense, we are out of time, right? Because... Yeah. Cyclone Gabriel, the Auckland floods. Yeah. You know, we did leave it too late. We are living the consequences. The reason why I also say it isn't too late mm. is because every tenth of a degree matters, right? So every right, bit okay. that we can head off further warming mm. means that things won't get worse than they already are. Right. The more CO2 we can pull out of the atmosphere, the mm. more we can slow that effect down. And there'll never be a point where we're done. Yeah, ever. right. Ever. Yeah. Well, certainly not in our lifetimes. Yeah, yeah, right? okay. Like, this is something that we've got to keep up for the rest of our lives. Yeah, right. Right? If I wanted to do something, I'd have to do it forever. Yeah. That's hell on earth, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> well, no, because this is the thing that I keep saying is that most of the things that we need to do to fix climate change yeah. also make our lives better. Right? Yeah, yeah. Designing our towns and cities so that they're less flood risk comes with they're also nicer cities, right? Mm. Getting rid of all the internal combustion engine cars and replacing them with electric vehicles means that you have quieter, cleaner streets with less air pollution that causes, um, you know, respiratory illnesses and, and asthma yeah. and so on. And, and the best antidote for cynicism or, you know, feeling kind of checked out or disenfranchised is to get into action. Yeah. Even, even frankly, in quite small ways and saying, well, I'm going to make a difference to the things that are in my zone of control. What do you think you're going to do about this? Well, I don't think I'm going to change anything in my own personal lifestyle on account of that being too tricky. But I do think that the quickest way to have some impact will be um, going after farmers. Our 
agriculture is quite emissions intensive. Right? Yeah. So there is a lot of methane that comes from the fats and the burps from cows. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of nitrogen oxide from the fertilizer and the weed that comes from the cows. It's not so much that we are worse than others. Mm-hmm. It's just that because we are so big in terms of how much we produce, about half of our emissions come from the agriculture sector. Yeah. But every time we've tried to bring agriculture into the schemes mm. of pricing emissions and reducing emissions, they've been very successful at getting out of it. Yeah. I'll do it for you. I will single-handedly bring down agriculture in New Zealand in your name. Do it for both of us, because I can't be fucked. <laughs> no, there's no you chance you're double. getting out there. No We're going to get killed by farmers, by the way, if this goes out, I reckon. I'm going to get killed by farmers. I, th- I Well, I don't know if they'll come And I will avenge your death. Will you? <laughs> yeah. It's not uh, always accepted, though, that the... Excuse me, that was a burp. <laughs> So I might have to burp, is that? Is yeah, that, absolutely, oh, please, cool. I would encourage oh. it. I will tax it. And you reckon I could last a ni- at night or two in this? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It depends what comfort levels you're used to. Yeah, I have to sleep with a pillow with a special arch. Fancy. Yeah, I also have a bad back. I didn't tell you about that. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Might be in fact, I really wanted to join the territorials as a teenager, and my surgeon said I'd be a liability to the country. But well, it wouldn't be wrong. It's hard to hear still, <laughs> decades later. <laughs> <laughs> 